Hey, I'm Rhett. And I'm Katina. We've recently made Greece our new home. It's here that we will explore the customs, traditions, and people that make this country so beautiful. So like, subscribe, and join us on our adventures through this breathtaking country. Palestina Lava. Lefkada is known for its majestic landscape, the incredibly white rocky cliffs along the turquoise waters framing its beautiful sandy beaches. So naturally, the thing we were really looking forward to most on this island was going to a farm? The best food in Greece isn't at a restaurant or a taverna. It's usually at someone's home. Food prepared fresh with love. What's even more incredible is eating food directly from the source at the farm. Here we are. Ready to meet Andreas at Lefkada Micro Farm. Pretty exciting. I just reached out yesterday. I'd heard about the farm. He invited us and said, yeah, come hungry. So okay. that's something you don't say no to is when a Greek offers you food. And when someone with a farm offers you food. So we're walking up to meet Andreas now. <gasps> Look at that. Andreas. Okay. You? Nice to meet you. Andreas, like many of us, was searching for a more simple way of living. I've studied tourist management. I used to be the most expensive and exquisite cleaning uh, maid of the island with my teams. But I had enough. I didn't find joy and reward to what I was doing. So I decided to shut down the previous business and become a full-time micro farmer. And just like our project, the pandemic was the catalyst for him to take action. This project started for fun after the first stressful year of COVID. I came here as a therapy with a chainsaw. The place was abandoned for more than 30 years. The third day I got some pork shops and I have barbecue for myself. I liked it so much. After six months, I was coming from a mountainous village of Lefkas with 10 chickens in the back of my car. So for this year, my goal is to grow clean and healthy food for me first of all, and then for everybody else. So what you see that is growing here is not for, for sale outside of the farm. A professional farmer would be happy to cultivate with one or two percent organic matter in his soil. I have eight. The philosophy is we are what we eat. So um, the same applies to our veggie friends. He told us that he did this to get the produce back to the way it used to be. Uh, since refrigeration and modern transportation, uh, we have access and abundance to foods from all over the world any time of the year. Nature knows to take the olive oil in November or to take the oranges in uh, December. Now if I can have strawberries all year around, it's not working. So here it's a race against time between us the bugs. <laughs> and, and the ants. I think that if you don't have insects in your garden, you don't want to eat out of that garden. I have the same thing with mine. Take yeah. this one bite, bait and part. Mm. Mm. As we walked through the garden, Andreas was on the lookout for what could be served for dinner. Choose two, three tomatoes for yourselves, uh, cut them, wipe them and eat them. No, wipe it off first, babe. Well, no, it's too late. <laughs> it's delicious. This is lemon balm. Fennel, my favorite oregano. Oregano in ancient Greek was called oreganos. It's from two words, oros, which is the mountain, and ganos, which is bright. So it's what makes the mountain bright because of its white flowers. You pick the zucchini so we can try to eat it later. Okay. Yes, don't pull it, no. twist it. Bravo. So these are my rabbits, my goats and my chickens. The primary idea was to grow my own meat, but I'm too sentimental. And like any other farm, we had to make sure the animals were well fed before we could sit down for dinner. Come, 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 come. She's waiting for you. Oh God. <laughs> Take the bucket, I will go to, to bring them some water. Gurgula. Oh, Okay. Wow. All right. This is what we need. Yeah, <laughs> this would be a dream for me one day. <laughs> like an absolute dream. You can do it. I try so much to grow my own food. I try to encourage any of my friends to also grow their own food and let them know it's not as hard as what so many people, people just think it's difficult. From this piece of land with no more than three hours per week and not every week, you can feed your whole family winter and summer. Andreas told us that his visitors typically come from Western countries who are more tech savvy and affluent. 
It seems that those of us raised in this lifestyle come back searching for something we lost along the way. I don't know if you know things about olive oil. It's my favorite plant. And I have 60 beautiful trees of the white, long, thin cultivar. This is the only tree that it's not of the same uh, cultivar. This is the fat olive tree, while the rest are the long, thin, white uh, olive tree. You can see why it's called white, you can see why it's called thin, and you can see why it's called fat. This is a much more cultivated piece, let's say. It's much later than that one. This is probably the second oldest cultivar of olive tree in the world. We have more than 800 different cultivars around the Mediterranean basin. And in Greece, we have more than 400. We have the richest biodiversity of olive trees. What differences do we, do we spot here? We spot smaller leaves, um, not a lot of uh, fruits. Here we observe yeah. bigger leaves, they are also softer if you touch them compared to the other one. Uh, we see bigger and more fruits, but we see many uh, leaves that are bitten. So this is more susceptible to attacks from insects and diseases. But uh, my ancestors preferred this specific uh, cultivar because it's uh, very resilient. So they knew that at the end of the year, they will have something to eat. Uh, olive oil used to be like currency. This uh, cultivar will get tremendously nutrient olive oil. If you ask the locals, they don't like their trees. Why? Because they, they produce bitter and spicy olive oil. And I'm like, okay, you don't like it. But the stupid Hippocrates, the father of medicine, two and a half, three thousand years ago, that bitterness and spiciness are good indications of a nutrient food in general. So last year I harvested early and I had an excellent extra virgin olive oil of 0.3 acidity while the limit classified as extra virgin is 0.8. I decided to send a sample to analyze it for phenols. When in Greece, I always feel a sense of peace. I feel more calm and of course less stressed. I always assumed that this was because of the beautiful weather and more simple lifestyle. But as it turns out, there's another important piece to this Mediterranean recipe. Phenols are the antioxidants we get from the olive oil, from oregano and various other sources of food. And they actively reduce the oxidating stress levels of our blood. This reduces the chances of cancer, diabetes and cholesterol as well. If you have more than 250 milligrams per liter, you get to be classified as medicinal. I had 352. I didn't do something special. I harvested early, took care of my trees, and we used the raw method of extraction. Nutritionists and dietologists, they will tell you that the oleic fat acids we get from the olive oil, our body uses it to isolate the neurons of the brain and the nerves of our body. It works like a good isolated copper wire, so you have faster and more accurate information transmission. And if we think that the goddess Athena, the ancient goddess of wisdom, has her insignia had a branch of olive tree. If you visit the archaeological museum, you will find artifacts with this characteristic long and thin leaf, yeah. not the fat one. So for me, it's a great honor and privilege to carry on a heritage Two and a half, three thousand years. All of this gives me assurance that Greece still has many lessons to teach the more affluent countries of the world. We talked to Andreas about his purpose in creating Lefkada Micro Farm. I think nature is the only universal truth. And as modern people, we are deprived of family, religion, sports, everything the last years especially. We are all looking for truth, we are all looking for real things. This is as truth as it gets. And this is why it's the, the best uh, decision I ever made in my life, to come uh, back to my roots, to come back to the truth. And it's only one truth, nature. In our few days on the island, we were able to experience some great things that Lefkada has to offer, as it's one of the most beautiful islands to drive around, has incredible beaches, great local tavernas, and some great wineries. But there is no doubt that the highlight of our visit to this Greek island was what we learned about the art of simple living. As Andreas explained, the thin olive branches at Lefkada Micro Farm are a symbol of the goddess Athena. So it's fitting that we leave Lefkada feeling wiser, longing for a more natural way of life.